Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. To make a creepy idea charming doesn't make it charming, it makes it more creepy. And I think anyone can say that of today's film, Milk Money. This heart was almost taken. This heart had love of Okay, here's the premise. A bunch of little boys want to see a grown prostitute naked. Charmed yet? Yeah, it can only go downhill from there. How the hell are you supposed to have a whimsical semi-family comedy established when that's your friggin' setup? Who says they do? Not me! Let's get this over with, Milk Money. So how does this charming little romp of a movie begin, anyway? You ever fart and sneeze at the same time? And add Melanie Griffith's name over that, and we're off to a good start. It turns out a bunch of boys are having a girl slumber party, complete with giggling, talking about crushes, and having no fucking clue what the hell they're talking about. I found it in my mom's secret drawer. It goes in the bottom of the bathtub to stop the drain. No, it doesn't. It's a diaphragm. I think it's a travel drinking cup. Or maybe it's a cheap joke. I found it in my sister's room. I believe it's some kind of weapon. Okay, was I born a chick? Because even I knew what these things were at that age. Just because we're boys doesn't mean we're total friggin' morons. What's this? I don't know! It must have come from an ancient alien tribe! Let's try and milk it! <laughs> it's like a boob. Yeah. They can fly around. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> so after the charming flashlight boob scene, we cut to our main kid named Frank, and his dad, played by Ed Harris. It turns out Frank is studying sex education in school, but is having a little bit of trouble. They assign this, but I'm getting nowhere with it. You can't relate that to the real world. Like how? Like, was Mama Virgin when you married her? <laughs> Why is I always drinking when a scene like that happens? Are you gonna tell me about Mom or not? No. So he goes to one of those schools where the kids conveniently have no copyrighted images on their clothes as we see our three little heroes are pretty damn obsessed about this whole sex thing. What are we looking at? <laughs> oh, and they watch porn too. Did I mention that part? What's that? I think it's an elbow. Will you stop cleaning? Why do you do that? My dad demands complete order and sanitation. Okay, here's the thing. If you want to talk about a kid's sexual discovery, that's fine. But they're doing it in such a cutesy way. Do it in an adult movie. This is not the right way to handle it. Oh, don't believe me? Don't believe me that's overly sappy and cutesy? Well, let's take a look at the three kids here. You got one kid always telling jokes, another kid who's concerned with being clean, and the last kid who's obsessed with his leather jacket and good-looking hair. Sound familiar? Right, if you wanted to hear the equivalent of Full House talking about their sexual discoveries, get out of here before I kill you! I know a place where the girls are naked all the time. Where guys can see naked girls all they want 24 hours a day. The internet. It's all over the place. I don't believe such a place exists. Where is this? The city. They partake in screenwriting cliché number 562, breaking the piggy bank with a hammer when they simply could have just opened it. And they begin raising the money to go to the city to see a woman naked. They sell their videos, they sell their comics, they let... girls pay to try their jackets on? That confuses me, I don't know. And they finally get up enough money to go to Randomville, where the prostitutes are many. come across screenwriting cliche number 235, the gangster in the tacky Hawaiian shirt and jewelry. Cash, where are you going? You don't ask me that. You never ask me that! Never ask me about my painfully obvious business! It turns out he's the mobster slash pim for Melanie Griffith's character, V. Tch, wouldn't that be a better movie? She's the kind of person the boys are looking for, but don't know how to find. Really don't know how to find. How do we tell a prostitute from everybody else? Yeah, how do we know we're not asking a ballerina or a lawyer? You just gotta go for it. I'm sorry, but I refuse to believe that any group of boys can be this commendably dumb. I mean, this is beyond having no social skills. This is being an alien on another friggin' planet. Excuse me. Yes? Are you a prostitute? What? Well, if it's not a personal question... Oh. You guys need some help? I want to see a naked lady. Ooh. How much money you got? $103.62. That'll do it. Come on. 
Really? So now these kids are so stupid they don't even remember Stranger Danger? Cause that's taught to you in like kindergarten! Hell, even this guy looks like a cartoon mock-up of all those criminals you're not supposed to go with! Okay, backpacks. Oh! Luckily, Griffith happens to open the door right on his face in the middle of a job. You all right? Yeah. So after she saves their lives, the boys wish to thank her in the best way they know how. Asking her to take her top off. We just want to look. How much looking? As much as money could buy. You feel that uncomfortable tingling in the back of your neck that tells you you're going to hell for watching this? That means you're still human. Hold on to that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, pull your shirts up over your heads. Come on. Okay, you're not hairy enough to be dangerous. I swear to God, this movie is a five-star restaurant menu of raw. I wouldn't mind so much, except we're only on the appetizers. So she takes him back to her apartment and, well, guess what she does. What's the matter? I can't do it. I want to be a gentleman. Doesn't a gentleman bring enough for everybody? This is the greatest moment of my life. Oh god, the bright, goofy, colorful music will suck out all the despicable unpleasantness this movie is offering. So V goes to that reject from Tony and Tina's wedding, who's pissed off because he knows that his girlfriend Anne Hage is gonna go lesbo in a year or two. I'm a person and I have feelings. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're a person now. Don't either you two move until I get back. I am a person. I'm a human being. I know you can't tell it by my acting, but it's true. Tell the asshole I'm borrowing his car. She sees the boys got their bikes stolen and offers them a ride in the gangster's car. It was nice meeting you. Likewise. You're a very well-behaved young man. You know, for someone who runs away, puts his friends in danger, and pays women to take their clothes off. But it turns out her car breaks down and she has to stay in the suburbs. Which of course leads to the meeting of V and Frank's dad. Who, did I mention, has a dead wife? V, this is dad. Hello. Hello. Dad. <laughs> well, I can certainly see where your son gets all his awkwardness from. What's she doing here? Her car broke down. Yeah, but who is she? She's Brad's new math tutor. She gave me a ride home from his house. And then her car wouldn't start. And this leads to screenwriting cliche number 129, misreading the other person's double meetings. Do you enjoy it? Enjoy it? I bet you're really good at it. There's only one way to find out. Boy, am I glad to hear you say that. Because it's the one subject he's having trouble with. Him? Frank. Frank. You think you could fit him in? Okay, okay. I'm gonna give you one chance. ONE CHANCE TO TAKE THE HIGH ROAD! If you are actually smart enough not to take advantage of this joke, then I will have some measly little bit of respect for you. So go ahead. What's it gonna be? Are you kidding? At his age? I'm afraid if he doesn't learn it now, he's never going to. You're going to hell. Yeah! You're going to hell, movie! I'm so sorry! No, no, you stay down there! You stay down there and you die! You die down there, movie! Yeah! So, after we partake in the lowest of lows, we see V walk around the suburban town trying to make some money. Love to see you smile. Look at that woman. Oh my god. That is bad. It is. It's very, very bad. Would you, uh, like some company? Yes, I would. Did you hear that? That was bad. That was very, very bad. I'm sorry, is this how white people act? I mean, I'm white, and I'm incredibly confused! What are you doing here? Looking for you. Hi, Frank. She spoke to me. I speak to her, but she never speaks to me. Uh, yeah, and she probably heard all that, you douche. Aren't you gonna introduce us to your friend, Frank? I'm Frank's father's sister, Aunt V. We've gotta be going now. See you later. That is bad. 
That is very, very bad. Wow, I've never heard a horrible catchphrase try to be so needlessly nailed into your head since. How rude. <laughs> So V finds out that her gangster friend has been shot and that the other gangsters think that she stole a bunch of money that belonged to them. So, of course, she hides out in Frank's treehouse until the car is fixed and she can flee town. But there's even more important things going on during that story. 